Hey guys, welcome to the Gods Unchained Beta with the Professor. All right, in today's video, we are going to be presenting to you a brand new deck for the Divine Order. The purpose of this video is to give you a heads up and a head start. So I'm partnering with Fake Muse to come up with a deck fear crafting idea using the Divine Order cards. So that way when the set is available on day one, you'll be able to just copy the deck in this video and go ahead and pilot it jump into ranked and win some games. And lucky for us, we have one of the top players in Gods Unchained, Fake Muse, joining us to help with a deck theory craft. Fake Muse is a top ranked weekend player. He's also has held number one MMR many times. He has strong and amazing tournament showings for all the tournaments that we've had so far in the community. And he's also known for, as a great deck builder. If you're playing at any competitive level, chances are you're playing a deck that he may have created or has tweaked or your opponent is probably playing a deck that he's um, masterminded so welcome fake muse hey how's it going today good good thank you for uh, spending some time with us so i know that you're you're pretty creative and uh coming up with some really consistent and strong decks so i wanted to bring you on board to be able to provide some value for the viewers uh and coming up with your you know, your best idea for a deck that a player can pilot right on day one on the Divine Order release. So let's go ahead and um, go into that. So I appreciate you doing that, Fake Muse. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. I think it's going to be very exciting to get a new meta going right now. I definitely would like some new cards to spice things up for sure. Yeah, so for speaking of new cards, uh, you, we've all seen the cards. You you revealed a couple cards as well from the Divine Order when we were doing the leaks. Uh, what's your overall thoughts so far on the Divine Order set? Well, it's interesting um, because Arbor appears to have a much stronger feel than I originally anticipated, um, just from the little playtesting I have done. And uh, Frenzied... Some synergies in Frenzy can get a little bit bananas as well. And overall, I think the Divine Order set is a little bit stronger uh, than I originally thought. You're seeing, uh, as I, I don't want to call it a complete power creep, but I feel like you're going to be ut utilizing a lot of these cards um, a lot stronger in Trial of the Gods, in my opinion. And it's going to be interesting to see... Uh, how many of these cards end up getting nerfed? Because I feel like there are going to be some some of these cards that need to be nerfed, and uh, how many of these are just going to be uh, staples uh, for for sets to come? I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of potentially high value cards in this set, and right from the start. Oh, that's great! For, thanks for sharing that. I was going to ask you um, when you mentioned you felt it's going to be a strong set, and and you you clarified that you think. Um, it's going to be taking a lot of places in, in, in terms of decks. And you mentioned how it's better than Trial of the Gods. Um, just first blush right now, how are you thinking it on the power level compared to Genesis? Because I know some players have a reluctancy to purchase Genesis cards because of the cost. Do, do you think that um, some of these cards are on par or might, may be able to replace Genesis cards? Or does it remain to be seen? Uh Oh yeah, I mean, I think that there's already a replacement for Pyramid Warden at common in this set, which is absurd. And, I mean, the, this set feels like it's so quick that, and at least in my playtesting, that almost cards like Demogorgon are getting less relevant. Um... So, it'll be interesting to see as uh, people better finally tune their control decks if that will continue to be the case or not uh, i think it's easier right now to build a really good aggro deck than it is to build a really good control deck it leaves me out and i'm kind of curious if that's going to change or if that's just going to be a constant throughout this uh, expansion great great wow some strong words there predict predicting the downfall of pyrid warden and demogorgons wow that's a you're hyping the setup pretty pretty well um you must work for the marketing team uh, i don't work for the marketing team because they would not want demogorgon and pyramid warden messes to uh, fall because of all the greedy demigods like myself uh <laughs> are have, have a good amount of eth invested in in some of those cards so yeah we uh the demo becoming irrelevant isn't to my personal benefit yet. 
All right, all right. And then I was going to ask you what you like or don't like about the set. You already mentioned you 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 thought you, you order came in stronger than you thought, so it sounds like you, you like that. And then you also mentioned Frenzy. Um, anything else you like, and is there anything you don't like? I mean, f for me, the, the only negative thing I can say is I think they're introducing too many keywords. It's, it's kind of interesting. They're, and... and uh, and I don't like the fact that we're going from four god powers down to three. The god powers are really a big pet peeve of mine. Uh, I'm not a fan of a lot of the changes they've made there in general. Um, and I think they might have introduced too many keywords. You're talking four new keywords to learn, which doesn't simplify things. I think it's going to make it more difficult to balance the set as well. And uh, it's going to make it a crazy environment on day one. With that being said, the fact that it's going to be a crazy environment on day one is one of the things I like about the set as well. Because uh, we've been, um, we're approaching one year since Trial of Gods came out. And I've been playing since October and have not had a new expansion. So having a new expansion and new cards to play with is super exciting for me. And that's that's just what I'm looking forward to the most is it's going to be complete chaos once this set comes live and trying to uh, navigate our ways to optimal builds. Yeah, that's a perfect segue. So good thing we have this video here where Fake News will be helping us with a deck guide. So that way you can take advantage of the chaos on, on day one and possibly use that deck and carry that over into the rank weekend and crush the competition fake news approved um you you mentioned the the four keywords fake news so i'm, I'm thinking it's armor blessed order and i'm missing one uh frenzied 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 okay there you go thank you thank you and then yeah. um so also i just wanted to comment on the god power i don't think the god power is really tied to the set i think they're releasing the changes at the same time, but I think they could release the set without changes to God Power. Is that correct? They they could, but since they're doing it at the same time, then I kind of tie it in just because it's it's occurring at the same time. It feels like it's just a part of the set. And for me, going from four to three takes out some of the flexibility. I have uh, had a personal attachment to some of the God Powers that are going away. And I'm scared of a particular death god power. The, the two uh, mana to draw a card is scary. Let's right. just put it that way. But, um, I mean, I, I get that it's all a part of evolving the game. Uh, I know it's not directly tied to the set, but it's indirectly kind of tied to the release of the set. Okay. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. And just a real quick, I, I, uh, I was going to ask you about the predictions on new meta, but it sounds like you already went over it, talking about how you think it's going to be chaotic, lots of changes, lots of keywords, changes to the god power, and you also mentioned that some of the cards, you know, quote unquote, may or may not be power creep, but definitely on a power scale that could influence a lot of the decks. Um, any other predictions to the meta you want to add besides those ones? I mean, I think that the top decks the first weekend are going to be aggro, but I am biased. So this video that we're doing today is a little bit definitely going to be on the faster side of decks. And uh, hopefully, you know, the, the more simple, fast mindset is um, going to be prevail early on now i don't know if this is always going to be the case i just think it takes longer to finally tune the control decks but there are particular control death decks that could end up long-term dominating the meta but i don't think that's going to be the the top deck on on week one right i agree with you there control has takes a little bit more um finessing and experimentation and adjustment and tweaking uh so again uh fake news already alluded to it we are going to do a video today on Fake Muse's deck choice for day one. Um, also, just want to tee it up. We're going to go ahead and do a deck build with Fake Muse, play a game with it. But afterwards, I want you all to check out Fake Muse's Twitch and his YouTube. He is going to make other deck theory crafting builds for the Divine Order set on his channel. So if you guys want different flavors and different looks and different options when Divine Order drops, Please make sure to follow Fake Muse and subscribe and check out check them out. But for now, uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and jump into a, a deck building with the Divine Order set. So let's get right to it. All right, everyone. So here we are. We're gonna look at Fake Muse's deck choice. Um, 
we're going to go ahead and let him pilot and we'll ask questions to make sure we get all the nuances of his decks and his um, thought process. So take it away, Fake Muse. Hey, everybody. So I'm starting off with a deck that I've named Face the Place uh, because Face is the Place is too long of a name, in fact. Um, basically, this deck is going to utilize the Frenzy keyword a lot. So Swashbuckler can deal one damage to the, to the opponent or can deal one damage to any, any target. So this can trigger Frenzied. As you see here, we've got uh, a Viking synergies here. These four are Vikings. Uh, this has Blitz if you're Frenzied, so it can easily trade. Vanguard Axe Woman staple in many aggro decks and just many decks in general right now in, the, in this meta. And since it's a Viking, it fits well in this deck. There's going to be a lot of Viking synergies in this build as well. This let, is let me bigger arch archetypes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, let me jump in right here. So let's say that uh, a player did not have Swashbuckler and he mentioned how important it is that he could go face for triggering Frenzy. Do you think there's a replacement for Swashbuckler or do you think that's uh, a key for this deck? I don't think it's necessarily a key for the deck. I will say this. I don't like just swapping in Athenian Archer. Um, there are other cards for me that are intriguing for me. Like, in particular, Bar Fight. I haven't actually played with the card, but I considered running it. And it actually functions a lot of the way that Swashbuckler does. It deals one damage to each character, including your own. But if you're Frenzy, it's only one damage to the enemy characters. Okay. So this can trigger Frenzied for you if you're not already Frenzied. Uh, like Swashbuckler can, so it's a little bit flexible. This actually could be a better card than Swashbuckler. Again, I don't consider my deck list fully optimized now. I still need to play test some more. This deck has been uh, doing relatively well in the games that I have played. Sounds good. Thank so you. So for... I, I don't think that Swashbuckler is a necessity necessarily. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for offering up that option of a of a potential swap. All right, let's go on to the uh, two mana. So two mana, uh, you see the Toxic Pyramid Wardens, the Enduring Builds, um, which, which I hope they're nerfed and that by the time the new expansion comes out that this won't be included. But as of right now, uh, Enduring Shield is very strong. Um, I, I like these Vikings here. Uh, so two mana, two, three, Inspiring Skull. Roar gives plus four, plus one to random creature in your hand, and if, and if you're frenzied, and again, one key with our deck is we're going to try to be frenzied a lot, uh, it also gets twin strikes. So if you're able to get this buff on a creature with blitz, and sometimes with a lower curve, we're going to be able to set that situation up, then getting twin, twin strike to a creature with blitz can just generate some huge value. Um, here's another card, two mana, three, two. Uh, solid stats for cost. Again, it's Viking Tribal Tag. Um, you get a 1-1 one, one Relic, but if you're Frenzied, it becomes a 3-1 Relic. Um, very solid stats for cost. Uh, I put in Iron Tooth Goblins, expecting a lot of Relics in this meta. I'll be honest, um, in my playthrough, these might not have been completely necessary. I might be removing these, but for now, I'm just keeping them in the deck as an option. And then the Master Tacticians, this is just a great Viking. It's protect two mana. Viking tag as well. Uh, and, and the flank ability here can be very effective. Okay. So it sounds like you have the Iron Tooth Goblin in there as a reflection of the current meta where relics are rare, uh, really prevalent. And, that, and then you also have Enduring Shield in there considering it's really powerful right now. Um, yeah. Uh, so let's ask, let me ask you for potential substitutions for those but before you answer that i just want to make sure we go over this i don't think we did uh, but frenzied basically procs as soon as you do any kind of damage to the opposing god's hp you, you basically enter a frenzied state correct yeah yeah uh, basically if you damage your opponent on your turn then you become frenzied until the end of your turn so any damage by any way that you can get it there gives yourself frenzied. And then is, is frenzied Deck, only for specific gods or is it all gods can get frenzied? I believe it's all gods can get frenzied. However, um, there are certain gods that have cards um, that 
uh, synergize with that more. Okay. Like, war has a lot of synergy for this, while the gods with order, for instance, a lot of the order synergy, uh, do not. Like, uh, magic, for instance, they don't have as much uh, frenzied okay. uh, available. All right. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so looking for replacements, a uh, pyramid warden. I mean, there's no two mana two six front line. There's a three mana card that we'll get to later on. That's kind of like a replacement. But you know, when you can run um, two pyramid, why why run pyramid warden type cards when you could run th four? You know, <laughs> that's kind of my mindset here. It's just greed and just adding them to the deck. Um, the Enduring Shield, one card that I would consider if they do a nerf to Enduring Shield is Commander's Gladius. It's a two mana, one two relic that does, it's got God Blitz, so it can proc your Frenzy, which is a key thing for our deck. Nice. And it costs a critter in hand. Uh, this might be the meta where Commander's Gladius has become relevant. Um, and the current meta has not been, but the fact that it is goblet, so you can get the you can get the frenzied, uh, and the the creature the hand buff can be of, of use as well. So I think this this gets more utility in this meta. Uh, Iron tooth goblins. We can look at more just Vikings to replace uh, stuff like blood boil outlaw. Got deep consideration for my deck, and I actually had it in my original build and removed it. Uh, the foolhardy berserker had a lot of consideration. So when you're looking for cards to replace that maybe you might not want to run, like Iron Tooth Goblet and Pyramid Warden, some of these higher value Viking plays uh, that are low cost but are very strong are stuff that I would look to first uh, for replacements. Great, thank you. We've looked at one, we've looked at two. Now let's look at three. I don't have much at but there's two really strong cards I want to go over. First off, Thundercaller, and this is the the card that synergizes mainly with the Vikings. Basically, you play this on a turn you're frenzied. Thundercaller is a three mana four four because it it buffs itself, um, and it also buffs all of your other Vikings plus one plus one. The value Thundercaller generates is absolutely insane this card is a card that i think needs to be nerfed or people will abuse it but for now new set hasn't come out i want to abuse this very strong card that's like and a, then uh that's like yeah. a a, uh, a valka's axe in a body two turns earlier yeah it is quite disgusting and that's why we have a lot of Vikings in our deck is because this buffs the Vikings. We want to get the Viking synergy going. And I don't I think we've got enough high qualities that we're not losing out on quality, um, keeping the tribal synergy. So I think that the Vikings are gonna be strong in this uh, meta for sure. And uh, I kind of hinted at a potential replacement for Pyramid Warden. Uh, here you've got Bronze Gate is a three mana two four structure this looks like barbed portculus except it's got r1 and one thing i really underestimated when i didn't play this set and was looking and trying to buy a car without playing was the effect of armor you drop this on turn two or turn three and your opponent is just going to struggle. It's just very hard. You have to deal five damage to kill it in one shot. Or absorbs damage on each attack. So it is just hard to get through that gate. Usually, you have to give up a lot of resources to get through this. Um, wow. So, yeah. Wow, never thought I'd see the it's, day that Fake Muse runs a structure in his deck that can't attack. <laughs> fake Muse... Fake Muse running a structure and a deck called Faces the Place. Exactly. <laughs> that is that is uh, quite... I, I think the Bronze Gate is going to be a card that might be a 2x in every single deck. Control and aggro. A lot like Pyramid Warden is in a lot of the top meta decks right now. And you might be seeing two Pyramid Wardens and two Bronze Gates because it, it protects your... Creatures like Thundercaller, for instance, which is a musk creature for your opponent if you play this. And it also um, 
it's just going to take so many resources unless light plays light slutty um, just to get around this. It's just so strong. Sounds like that's your sleeper pick for the set then, or one of your sleeper picks. It's a scary card. Um, it's, it's class neutral too, so it can go in literally any deck. It can go in aggro, it can go in control. I just think it's going to be a very good, a very good card. Um, it might need to be nerfed, to be honest. It maybe make it more would be more fair, but at the moment we're gonna play it because this is the stats it shows. So sounds good. Um, moving on to four, uh, we've got another round, and this is a very intriguing card to me. And uh, gives a friendly creature plus three, plus three, and at the end of your turn, if you're a friend, give another give a random creature in your hand plus three, plus three. So the idea is you're going to play it on a turn that you're going to be able to get frenzied on. And you don't have to be frenzied when you play the card. That's another key element to this card. Another fun thing that I've enjoyed playing the card. So if your opponent has the uh, Bronze Gate we've seen here, and you've got a 2-2 minion and maybe another minion or relic in play, and you can't get by the Bronze Gate, well, you can play it down uh, with... On your 2-2 two -two minion, kill the bronze gate, because a 5-5 five, a five attack is good enough to get through the gate. And then uh, attack your opponent's face, become frenzied, and then this buffs a creature in your hand, plus 3, plus 3. So the value you generate in one turn is just absolutely insane. You're generating plus 6, plus 6 in stats, and it's an ability that lives on the creature. So if your opponent can't kill the minion that has this buff, then it's plus three, plus three, uh, to, to a minion in your hand every single turn. It's just, yeah, the snowball potential of this is just insane. Oh, so that spell card, that uh, effect in the uh, quotations, is not a one-time thing. It's actually, it becomes a enhancement on the card that's cast on, so then it could trigger multiple turns. Yeah, it, it can trigger it uh, multiple times. So wow. basically, it... It becomes a must-remove creature for your opponent. And if you play it in an ideal situation where you were frenzied, you've already generated plus six, plus six in stats for four mana, which is great. But when you think of another card, a Red Fume Serum, which also has Burn attached to it, um, which only generates plus five, plus five in stats, um, plus five mana. So you compare this to Red Fume Serum, I think another round is a lot more value to it. And I think this is going to be a very meta card in a lot of these tempo-oriented war decks. Yeah, I'm thinking that's going to be a scary card, especially if Enduring Shield giving a creature protected stays, because now you could, like you say, use use this on the creature to clear out, make a favorable trade, then possibly go face with the shield that you've already had, give that creature a protected now, and now your opponent has to work really hard to get rid of that creature, or that creature will, will give two rounds worth of plus three, plus three to creatures in your hand. Yeah, the, the, the value and snowball potential of another round is is very strong, in my opinion. Wow. Good find, good find. Um, and then the, the other card I've been running is Viking Longship. This is something that's been a staple in a lot of aggro. Uh, what I really like is the flank that it gives not only itself, but all of your other minions is a way that you can get frenzied easier in this environment if your opponent has a lot of structures. So if you attack with one minion, everything else can go to the fix. Um, and it's a Viking, so it works with a lot of the other synergy in this deck. Um, next up is, this, this card concerns me a lot because I think it's very, very strong. The only five drop we have in our deck, Cage Berserker, um, it's a 2-2 two, two for 5 with Blitz, so that doesn't sound good. But the end of every single turn, if you are frenzied while it's in your hand, it gets plus 2, plus 2. Basically, for this to be a positive value card, it only needs to be in your hand for 2 turns while you're frenzied. And this entire deck is built around getting frenzied. So what I've been doing, this has been in my opening hands, I've been keeping it. Wow. And I've played... Uh, turn four eight eights with blitz. Um, when you do that, um, that's quite the swing. Uh, not many decks can survive that. 
so it can be just super, super strong. Obviously, it's not great at the end of the game where you're in top deck mode, but you're hoping to draw it you know, earlier or in your opening hand, ideally. So for now, your recommendation is uh, keep in hand. Don't mulligan it away. Yeah. Um, for one, I play this deck with the Slayer God Power, which we'll get to a little bit later. But you can proc yourself and guarantee yourself that you can frenzied every single turn, at worst case, by just using the God Power. Um, so that buffs this minion. And the rest of the deck is so dead set on becoming frenzied that... It's this should be very big, and it's usually going to be probably when I've been playing it, it's been a five mana eight eight, a five mana ten ten. I've even played it as a five mana twelve twelve, and that with blitz is just insane value. And then, if that wasn't enough value, uh, I'll go on to the next card a uh, rolling thunder and. This is just bananas. So, for those of you who don't know, Thundercaller, uh, as a reminder, is this card here. So, at the end of each turn, at the end of your turn, if you're a frenzy, dip plus one, plus one to each of your Vikings. Um, so now let's go back to Rolling Thunder. Two, three, three Thundercallers. However, if you're frenzy, you're summoning four of them instead. So, when you think about this card, when you play this when you're frenzied, you're summoning four three threes that buff all of your functions plus one plus one each at end of turn. So, if hypothetically you play this on an empty board, then you're getting um, four seven sevens for six mana wow. if you're frenzied. And if you've got other minions on board, then, like, if you've got two other Vikings on board, then you're getting four seven sevens, um, two Vikings each get plus four, plus four, four six mana. Wow. So, that, the stats generated from this card alone, it basically tells me that they want, the, want you to play this and end the game. Because unless you've got a board wipe, and really a board wipe is the only answer to the card when it's just played and you generate that much on the board, then the game probably just ends. Because you're very likely to be frenzied next turn. So we'll get plus four, plus four again. Yeah. Which is just absurd. And um, the, the question for me is whether or not to run one or two of these. And the reason why I say that is because I've been drawing two of them in a lot of my games, which has annoyed me. But drawing two for consistency, this is definitely our top and later game win condition. Most of my aggro decks in the past haven't gone to six for these top ends. But this card generates just so much value that I can't reasonably turn it down. This is another card that I think is strong, a strong candidate to get nerfed pretty early in the expansion. Um, but for now, it is very scary. Yeah, I was going to mention when before you um, went into the details of, of your deck that off the first glance, the um, when I saw the whole deck, I was like, whoa, Muse has a... Two six mana cards there without knowing the card. I was just like, wow. Usually I don't see your, your aggro decks go that high. So, but I mean, I understand. I mean, that card just seems really high potential. And just real quick, so it sounds like um, the new god powers that we're talking about um, are rolling out with the set because you said you're already playing with the new god powers. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, the god powers are on PTR. The new god powers. So we've only got uh, three god powers to choose from. So the god power that I play with this deck is Slayer, but it's not the Slayer that you see on the main game right now. Uh, this Slayer is for two mana, it deals two damage to your opponent's god. So you can guarantee yourself to prop Frenzied with your god power. Yeah, yeah. So I, I actually just, um, you, you can't see this because you're sharing your screen, but uh, on my screen uh, for the video, I'm sharing the new god powers only for war where it shows the Slayer God Power along with the other two new ones. And for Slayer, it says, Slayer has been reworked to be very aggressive, making up for its linear game plan. This should let players punish decks that want to waste time or finish off low health opponents. Slayer, two mana, deal two damage to your opponent's god. Yeah, and I think 
for war in particular, you've got two really strong god powers, the other of which is Onslaught. I don't want to talk about that more than just mentioning it. I used to be the champion for Yonslaw, but um, it's reached a toxic place and we've broken up. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's going to be very strong in the, in the expansion, though the, the deck build is going to be a lot different than this. Uh, but more control-oriented, and I think it might be a little bit slower to get those optimalized for the new expansion, but once you do, I think that's going to be really, really strong. I think that the Slayer with the seed idea is going to be very meta for people who want quick games. A Dex, maybe not this exact deck, but decks with this type of flavor, I think are going to be very popular as well. All right. And the other, and the other one power no one's ever going to play. So, <laughs> uh, the two mana summon a one one Viking, and it's just a one one. It's, it's just, it's just not a good god power. Yeah, sounds like you're not a fan of Valka's presence, which summons a one one raider. No problems, not for everyone. All right. Yeah. So thank you very much. Being very good. Yeah, it's not. Uh, thank you very much for sharing the deck build. That way we could kind of see the deck in action. So we're going to go ahead and queue into a match. All right, let's go ahead and queue in with Fake Mises' War Deck, Divine Order. All right, facing against Big Bunce. We go with the Slayer God Power to do two damage directly to the opponent's god. We are going second. We don't need a four mana creature yet. I think we can go ahead and throw back the Bronze Gate here. And their color looks pretty good. Then we could throw away the Axe Woman here. Double Tactician. That looks like a good turn one play to the bag of tricks out. Opponent is playing Palace Genius. Add a random one mana magic spell to your hand. All right, so let's go ahead and play the Master Tactician. Has protected. Sets us up to be able to get Frenzy quickly. Okay, so this should trigger Frenzy right here. The question is, do we want to play the other Tactician or do we want to start the... Um... Okay. At the end of your turn, if you are Frenzy, give plus one, plus one to each of your Vikings. So let's go ahead and test that out to see if Thundercaller will proc all the creatures in hand as well. We are frenzied now. We're going to play Thundercaller. All right, so it only the effect only goes off for the creatures on the board. Cage Berserker is now a 4 4. Amplification Machine. Spell Thief. Okay, so we can go ahead and um, equip the shield here. We can't hit here yet, so we can go here to get protected into our Thunder Collar. We want to go ahead and just go into Frenzied mode, so I think we ignore his board. We have an option of bagging out the Berserker next turn, so we are going to save our pip for the next turn. Thunder Collar buffs these two cards. And Cage Berserker is now a 6 6. So we are seeing the uh, Viking synergy that Fake Muse was talking about. Chooses to destroy our protected there. Opponent chooses to either draw two cards or gain two mana locks. Unlock two mana locks. Okay. We're going to go ahead and drop our Cage Berserker. Hit here. Let's get frenzied. GG.
All right, so that's Fake Muse's Divine Order War Deck. You can see how fast it is and how quickly the creatures on the board could escalate and get out of hand with the stat gains, but also combined with Endurance Shield, giving protected to the creatures. So quite a potent deck. Be sure to go ahead and try that out on the first day the Divine Order set is available. This is one of Fake Muse's top deck choices, so you'll be sure to see it on the rank ladder as you play when Divine Order is available. Right here. All right, so we are queuing in the PTR with Fake Muse's theory craft of face, Faces the Place of War Deck, Slayer, aggressive cards, aggressive deck with Viking Synergy and really trying to abuse the frenzied um, new keyword. Here we're taking on a death deck. Uh, it'll be interesting to see which god power he goes with here. Uh, I, I think that death has one really strong god power, the um, Neferu Sacrifice, I believe what it's called. Uh, that's not what my opponents play. They're playing Blood Ritual. My opening hand, when I see somebody playing Blood Ritual, I uh, always automatically assume they're more of a control-oriented deck. And when if they're control-oriented, I don't like the Bronze Gate as much. Uh, because I, I'm going to be able to get the board, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and look at that. Captain don't really synergize as well with each other. Actually, they kind of work okay, but I'm going to get rid of one here. Uh, Pyramid Warden. Um, I like this a little bit because I can go ahead and prop, prop Frenzy. Don't want this. and Okay, don't want the Iron Tooth Goblin. We were running out of time there, so I sped up a little bit. No um, problem. Talking through there, but yeah, just a little bit of a similar role again here. So let's look at why he, my opponent just played. Afterlife, transform a random creature that costs four or less into a 1-1 one, one zombie. And it gives it this afterlife. That looks like a very fun card I've never seen before. Um, so there's a pretty high chance that this is going to basically trigger the Pyramid Warden. But we're going to go ahead and do this. But if this transforms my Pyramid Warden into a 1-1 one, one zombie, then I don't think it really hurts me too much, does it? Interesting. So they're giving this plus one armor, and they are uh, blood armor, set one of your creatures. Okay, interesting. So we draw King Asher. So this is a card we'd prefer in our opening hand, um, but, but we draw it the second turn, which is a great time to draw it. So what we're going to do is we're going to give our god Frenzied. Notice the animation, the fire, and all this stuff. That's how you can tell you're Frenzied right now from playing this. You will get the bonus by playing the um, barbed, uh, the, the Volcus Captain, which gives us a 3-1 Relic, uh, which is just a lot of value. A, a two mana 3-2 that also gives you a 3-1 Relic is just a lot of value. And you notice the Cage Berserker, we get the plus two, plus two. Hopefully our opponent comes back because we're winning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was gonna, uh, I was gonna ask you if you cared but with this deck going first or second, but I mean, even going second now, you've already are setting up a devastating couple turns coming up. Um, I would prefer going first, but you know, as as we've seen in Gods Unchained in literally every meta, you often don't get your first pick on whether or not you get to go first or not. Uh, so okay, this is interesting. Uh, at the end of your turn, obliterate two random creatures from your void and summon a woman from... Okay, if you're frenzied, summon an addition zombie. So basically, with Necroceptor, I want to do everything I can to make sure my opponent is not frenzied, because otherwise they're going to get extra extra zombies. Uh, I do unfortunately do not have Relic removal, but one thing to keep in mind here in the Sanctum is Bronze Servant. So right now, is there a way I can remove this? Um... I can get, I can get three, six, nine, twelve favor, and this costs fifteen. So I'm very close to being able to just remove this, um, but it's always good to check that when, when, whenever you start. So what I'm going to do this turn, I've got to speed up since I've been playing slow. I'm going to go ahead and remove their zombie. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, hit face. So now we're frenzied. 
That's great. Hit face. I'm going to hit this because of this afterlife. It's going to transform one of these creatures into a 1 1 uh, zombie. And yep. And then I played the Pyramid Warden after because I didn't want this minion to transfer. So that's why I did the order of operations the way I did. As you can see, one favor away from being able to buy the Bronze Servant. You see, the Cage Berserker is already a 6 6. Ooh, my opponent has dust to dust. Wow. That is a very strong play by my opponent. So they're able to kill a large portion of my minions. And uh, yeah, very, very effective turn. So now we got to think through this turn here. This will transform one of my minions um, into a 1-1 one, one zombie. What we do is I can remove one of these and then this is basically that. Uh, but I want to also be frenzied here. I can also get frenzied with this. Okay, I want to I want to demonstrate the pattern of another round. So let's this might not be an optimal play, but it's a fun one. So let's go ahead here. Um I'll just go face because face is the place. And that's gonna just end our turn here. Gets buffed. So now you see this is an 11-11 because it got buffed twice. Uh, once from another round and uh, once from uh, the Cage Berserker. So this is going to be 11-11. It's definitely a card we're going to play next turn. Yeah, this can bad. be. This can have Blitz and Frenzied as well. Yeah, too bad it doesn't have God Blitz. Maybe we need to advocate for it to have God Blitz. <laughs> uh, that's, that's exactly what we need. Um, Okay, so I need to read what my opponent just played here. Accursed. All right. So here I want to, I want to kill this if I could. First, I need to just remove, I, I need to remove this because they're just generating too many tokens. Honestly, I probably misplayed last turn. I probably should have bought this last turn as well. Um, so we're just going to remove this, get that out of here. This afterlife isn't advantageous to me. It is advantageous to my opponent. I'm just going to go ahead and go face and let them deal with the situation. Um, I could have played this, but attacking these 1-1 one -one with leeches don't do great. Okay, so they're going to get their stuff you got a lot of zombie synergy coming here. My question is, is can they deal with a 5-mana 13-13 Cage Berserk? And uh, I think the answer is this creature's afterlife, which is my own creature, which is interesting. It'll be interesting to see how this plays. The, the Okay, their minion got the afterlife, this one. So that kind of worked out for them. We'll give them some more zombies and... So we get another zombie, we get another cage berserker. So when this dies, this is going to transform one of my minions into a 1-1. So I'm going to go ahead, actually wait, both of them have this afterlife. Situation, because now I've got to, I've got to make it so I can get both of these minions now. Okay, so this is going to force this. This has been difficult for sure, and yeah. I hate I hate doing this, but I have to do this. I didn't understand that correctly, did I? So I, I clearly made a play mistake here. <laughs> oh, did the afterlife go to the? Um... Oh, it's not. It's it's a random creature, so it's his creatures as well. Oh yeah, I missed that part. And too, also, right? I didn't, I didn't read it. It said four or less. Oh, so, so Cage you're... Berserker was, was safe. Safe. Interesting. Okay, yeah. good to know. Yeah, it's all part of having a new set, right? Yeah. So we're we're learning. Um, this is how to not panic. Um, I mean, Cage Berserker is going to come down. It's going to be a fifteen fifteen, 
And that's going to ask a lot of questions to my opponent. Although what, what you're saying is we could have dropped the Berserker last turn, a turn earlier. We could have. Um, so here, what I'm going to try to do here is try, I'm going to go face first. So if this gives plus one, plus one, and twin strike to a minion in hand, I'm hoping it's this guy. Okay, it's this one. This can be value later, because this is another Cage Berserker. This guy's going to come down, and I'm going to head and attack the biggest minion my opponent has. Um, and we're going to be threatening a lot of damage next turn, as you see. We've got a 15-12 on the board. Uh, this has got Blitz and Twin Strike. They've got Reap, so <laughs> they made me look like a fool. I need to remove this. Uh, for sure. I probably should have made me to remove this cursed obelisk a little bit earlier. Yeah, he kept generating zombies to hide that back line. So it was, I, I saw that it was you, you were trying to clear the board and it was just you didn't have enough reach to get to that back line. Yeah, so I I think I've really misplayed this game. In um, but we'll see how this deck does with poor piloting, because as a part of any good deck, um, oh boy. So you see here I draw the Bronze Gate, and I think we're going to see the power of the Bronze Gate. So is I want to... I'm going to play the Bronze Gate and the Viking Longship, but I'm going to give my Bronze Gate flank for the memes, even though it can't attack anyways. Um, I want to kill this structure because it's gone too far. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a zombie. This gets flank, and with the flank, it can remove a zombie. So that works out very well for me. And uh, yeah, we've got... Uh, a very intimidating board. So right now, this has armor one. So he can't attack with these zombies into this and deal damage. For a normal 2-4 front line, they could just attack with four zombies and... Oh, Nefru's will works. <laughs> um, well, good thing you put that front line down. And I hope this hits here. Ah, I did. Nice. <laughs> and things work out. Um, so, yeah, Neferu's will. It's very sad my opponent's been playing. I don't think we're going to win this game because we made play mistakes early that cost us here. But I can play Cage Berserker now if I want to. I want to. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to go for a specific card, and that specific card is Thunder. Time to call the Thunder down. Yeah, I was hoping for it, didn't get it here. You could argue playing the Enduring Shield here. Not particularly high value. I'll go ahead and do it just to clear out one of his minions. I don't want it super, super wide on me again. I kind of let him do that unintentionally the first time, and things got a little bit out of hand. So this is now a 9-9. Nine, nine. The question is who we get, and I need to get this Cursed Obelisk off the board, obviously. Ooh, I forgot that Blood Ritual kills. Yeah, I need to read his God Power as well. It's different uh, now as well. Yeah, that targeted Blood Ritual so, is actually pretty strong if you're playing a, uh, an aggro deck against it, right? Because they could just target your one your one health easily. Yeah, they can uh, definitely do that very easy, for sure. So I'm going to go ahead, play the Cage Berserker and Master Tactician. I mean, I can, I'm going to go ahead and just chip away at the zombies a little bit here. This does have... Like, and uh, so earlier, I, I, I had this card, which gave it flank and twin strike. So you see there the, the ability there. I actually didn't notice when I started the turn, but I made the correct decisions despite not noticing. <laughs> yeah. 
That's what the good players do. <laughs> they don't notice what they have, and then they just luck upon their, their turns. Okay, what is our opponent here playing here? Blessed. That is... Uh, they're they're gonna have me lose six favor as part of the bless. They've got the black bump of this. Get the protected here. Um, I think, and this is gonna be a great time to play another round next turn because we can guarantee basically a three three buff. They should ship the protected here, and they do. Uh, Swashbuckler, so the point of Swashbuckler in this deck is that um, it, can, it can basically proc Frenzy at any time it, we need. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to make this really, really, really big. And we're going to go ahead, face, I want to guarantee what gets buffed gonna pick up the shield maiden because I, I want it to be big so we're gonna give this plus three plus three at the end of the turn it's also gonna get the benefit from this giving it plus one plus one and twin strike so this is gonna be a shield maiden at the end of this turn um this also has twin strike um i probably should just do this i don't want to go here because they get the afterlife that direction so you see here, this is a 6-7 with Frontline in my hand right now. And this is going to generate plus 3, plus 3 in buffs every single turn until they can remove it. Yeah, that's the uh, the effect of another round you were talking about where it becomes a must-remove or they risk the plus 3, plus 3 going off every round after. Yeah, it's just it's very strong, in my opinion. So you see here, Longi is electing to draw a card here. Uh, probably a little bit desperate in digging, um, having seen what I have in store for them, is probably what they were thinking. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, like you mentioned, putting the deck together, that Berserker can get out of hand. And I think it's at that point now where he needs to find any kind of spell that could take care of it, or yeah, we he's in trouble. We've already seen uh, one Reap. Um, so that's obviously a card that if he's got a second one of his deck, deals with this. Uh, we've also got one other late game card that we haven't drawn, the Rolling Thunder. Okay, so you see him uh, playing the Ragnarok. Um, unfortunately, what my opponent has done has given me lethal, unless they've got another trick, because there's a Rune of Fire here in the Sanctum. So... Well, actually, I don't even need the Sanctum. Yeah, your God Power, uh, your God power go... adds the two for the face. And then the... God Power, yeah. And then the Power. So that was a very interesting game, I thought. We saw a lot of unique zombie synergies for my opponent that I didn't understand. And this is part of the learning process of playing a new expansion. And we saw some of my cards shine. You particularly saw the two Cage Berserkers uh, come out. Um, you saw the, the plus three, plus three buffs as well and how effective they could be. And another win for this deck it's won a lot of games in a row. So I uh, feel pretty good about the ideas behind this deck. Obviously have a lot to learn in the same boat right now. And the important thing here for any Gods Unchained player to improve, to look at your mistakes objectively and think about them and work work improved for the next game. So there were a lot of things I could have done better that game, but I uh, got lucky and still won. Yeah, GG. All right, everyone. So you saw Fake Muse there showing us his deck for Divine Order. He's liking War with Slayer God Power and an aggro Viking build with lots of synergy in terms of buffing and using the new keyword Frenzy. We saw a match where he was facing a death build uh, that was using zombies. We looked like we had the upper hand at the beginning. Favor kind of turned towards the middle. It went back and forth. And then at the end, as Fake Muse called it, um, one of the cards that he put into his deck, with, which was the um, Caged Berserker, where he mentioned that it has a potential to get out of hand. And it did just that. It became a, a really big threat on the board and was able to um, take control of the game and give 
fake news to win with this deck. Um, so that was my thoughts on your deck. It, it seemed really strong. I like the synergy on it. We saw the the Bronze Gate in action. We saw the bike, Viking synergy. We saw the um, the frenzied effect. Anything else uh, you like about that deck, or anything you want to let the viewers know to look out for for your deck? I mean, it's it's. I think it's. I want to say this is going to be a more simpler deck to play day one. But as you saw in my first game uh, with this, I made a lot of misplays. Um, so there's going to be a lot of things to still learn from it. But I think that, generally speaking, a build of this type, I think, probably needs maybe a little bit more fine-tuning. Uh, but I think a build in this area is still going to be very strong. Uh, we didn't see Rolling Thunder in that game, but if I had drawn Rolling Thunder on a turn that I could have put my opponent um, into Frenzy, then that would have generated four seven sevens for six mana and i don't care how many one one zombies you've got in play uh that's not going to be enough um so i i think that's going to be a, an interesting card in the deck as well but i think i think you get the general idea behind the deck uh, based on that first game yeah Just definitely in general. definitely love the synergy with the cage berserker another round and like you said you'd even draw rolling thunder and i don't think we even saw thunder caller right um, I do not believe we did. Yeah, yeah so we, okay. we didn't draw some of our Viking synergies, um, but I, we didn't need to. And that's that's a good sign of a tribal deck, is if you don't need the tribal synergy to have an effective deck, then the tribal synergy only adds to your deck. And that's one thing I think was kind of missing before with Viking War in particular, but with the addition of more quality Vikings in this set, I think that Viking War is probably going to come up come up a tier uh, from where it was in the previous expansion. Right on. And even then, uh, we saw great use of Frenzy by Fake News in that game. Uh, I remember one key play where he took Frenzy on and gave this 1 mana 3 1 Blitz. Um, so it's is basically a conditional thing where he was able to trigger it on demand and give blitz as needed to clear a creature off the board. Um, so fake news for those players that you know they'll they'll see this deck. You know it might be for them or might not be for them. Uh, this looks like a really strong deck to try out on day one, maybe even to the first ranked weekend. Um, for those of you, for those of other players that might not feel like playing war or playing um, aggro. I believe you have some more in store. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. I will be experimenting, uh, well, tomorrow from the day of this being filmed, but it'll be a different day from when you watch this. So you can check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash fakemuse9. I will be playing the uh, Flux Wheel um, PTR edition, where I'm going to build a deck with every single god, and theory craft with all of them. They're not all going to be hyper aggro decks like this. And the main focus behind my theory crafting is going to be with an emphasis on utilizing key cards from each god and trying to get them to work. So I think it's going to be a good learning experience for me and hopefully my viewers as well. And highlights from that stream and general ideas from that stream are also going to be available on my YouTube channel. Yeah, thank you very much. So for those of you um, that may miss Big Muse's Twitch stream on the PTR doing the Flux Wheel with different gods for Divine Order, you could always make sure you go to his Twitch channel and I will have his Twitch and YouTube and Twitter link in the description of this video. But you'll be able to catch his VOD. Uh, Fake Muse saves his VODs on his Twitch channel. So if you want to watch his his stream on the Divine Order different flux flux edition of different decks. You could check out his um, Twitch VODs. All right. Uh, anything else, Fake Muse? I don't know. I think I'm good. All right. Again, thank you for your time. I really appreciate you, one of the top players in Gods and Chain right now, and also one of the uh, top deck builders, sharing your thoughts on a um, early sneak peek of a uh, deck that could potentially be number one in the meta when the deck when the expansion divine order comes out so it'll be interesting to see uh the final evolution of faces the place war slayer that fake news just cooked up here so i appreciate that fake news thank you very much for your time all right yeah thanks for having me all right so we just saw fake news divine order war deck in action 
So here's the deck list for his deck right here using some Divine Order cards. I hope you all enjoyed it. I really appreciate Fake Muse for spending time with us and sharing his deck ideas on what he thinks will be a contender on day one of Divine Order. If you are interested in seeing more deck ideas from Fake Muse, if you are not interested in playing War or Aggro, be sure to check out his Twitch. Fake Muse is over at Twitch. I will be dropping his links in the description in the video, but you can check out his recent broadcast videos. He will have a VOD video of the day showcasing his different deck ideas for Divine Order. He'll be doing a gauntlet of the different gods using the Divine Order set. So that way you can get an idea of the different gods you can use that Fake Muse will be trying out with the Divine Order cards. Also, be sure to subscribe to Fake Muse on YouTube. Fake Muse will also be sharing some deck ideas on his YouTube channel for the Divine Order set. So don't miss any of his videos where you might see some great deck ideas which will give you a leg up on the competition once Divine Order is available. Currently, he has multiple videos available covering gameplay, tournament casting, high level matches, and some tutorials. So make sure to follow Fake Muse on Twitch and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Thank you again to Fake Muse for spending time and sharing his deck ideas. We really appreciate it and looking forward to seeing his deck at the top of the rank ladder.